Welcome to day 27 of my 30 day security challenge. It's the month long challenge I created to help you gain control of your privacy and security online. You can follow along with the whole series over at snubsy.com where you can also download a checklist and you can subscribe to youtube.com slash tech thing for the entire video playlist. Now today we are going to chat about public record information databases. Public records are available to anyone who is searching for information on you and it could include your real name, your birthday, your address, your phone number, your age, gender, previous addresses, and a lot more. This information could be sensitive material depending on your life, and unfortunately lots of sites have popped up that just scrape this data from places like voting registration and DMV records, property records, death records, business licenses, marriage licenses, criminal records, and a lot more. These sites curate these databases of thousands upon thousands of people, and most of it is readily accessible to anyone who wants to find you. It's also usually the first place someone will go if they are looking to find information on you. Now, while these databases are completely legal, it also makes it a lot easier for a criminal to physically find you. The sites continually scrape data and they update their databases as well. So if you remove information from one site during one month, it may appear again after a few months. It's a good idea to check these sites now and then to ensure your data has not appeared again. My friend Leslie created a detailed blog post on opting out of these kinds of sites at her blog, which I will link in the show notes. In it, she explains and links to each of the sites that may have your information on record. She makes two very crucial points that I think are very important. Number one, the sites are not always accurate, so check for different names or addresses via their search criteria in case there are multiple entries for you. And number two, some of them require an email verification to opt out, so it's very wise to create a new email address that all of these sites' verification emails will go to. You definitely do not want them scraping your real email address and then sticking that on the website too. Now sites you will most likely want to remove your data from include binverified.com, intellius, lookup.com, lookupanyone.com, mylife, pq, peoplefinder, private eye, publicrecords.com, spoke and spokeo, white pages, family tree now, and more. There's a lot of them. Some of these require you to send them a valid photo ID for removal, but most of them have an opt-out process on the website. There are a few ways to minimize the risk of having your real data online. You could just move into a tiny home in the middle of the woods and never register anything with the state agencies or the government, and I envy you if you can do that, but that's kind of hard to do for most adults. Alternatives include creating a trust for all of your money, your property, and your ownerships, establishing a business entity and running everything through that, and using alternative addresses for everything like the DMV and voter records. You could also sign up with a paid service like Abine, recommended by many InfoSec professionals. This service provides ongoing opt-outs for people searches and charges a per year fee. Now day 27 is now complete and tomorrow is all about RFID and Faraday bags. But first make sure to subscribe on youtube.com and hit up snubsy.com for the downloadable checklist. Again, I'm Shannon Morris and I'll see you tomorrow for day 28.